Hello and welcome back to round one back nine action from the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship presented by Barbasol. We are here in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Matt Keats Memorial Course at Nevin Park. Big Germ, the Yules, Big Bear, Commentaire. Gary Gerthy plus five. Yeah, ouch. Vino Mekola plus three. But that mm. is what can happen out here. That's through nine holes. Anthony Barella snuck under par, and we have Mason Ford at three under, which is shredding. Mm -hmm. So that's the type of course we're playing. Big versatility with bogeys and the birdies. Let's see what they can do on this back nine. We have Bradley Williams, who scorched it at a five under. So the mark's been set. These guys know what they yep. need to shoot because only four people move on today. Yeah, 16 players here. Four move on to the quarterfinals tomorrow. Very, very tricky stuff. We've got the players that were in 16th or uh, I believe 17th to 30th place mm -hmm. today, plus the two players who made it into the play-in or through the play-in yesterday. Hole 10, 400 foot, dead straight. One of the tougher birdie gets on the course because you just have to throw it as straight as you can, as long as you can. I mean, we had the gauntlet last year, but the gauntlet wasn't anything like this. Look at this shot from Anthony Barella, just short of the circle, and he has been putting well thus far. That's going to be a good look for the birdie on hole 10. Mason... Going hyzer flip, and look at the width that he played on this shot right here. Incredible shot. Yeah. I mean, that's a crazy way to play this hole, though. T pad, though, does push you to that right side, and there's two trees right off the tee to oh. the left that really push everybody wide. Vino's going to be You'll happy with how far mm -hmm. up the fairway he got. And the kick wasn't brutal, it was just kind of straight down off to the left side. Garrett is pushing this one nice and look at that little straight kick and he rolls back to the pin he's only 25 feet away for the birdie he went deep that's crazy incredibly well played for our group here on hole 10 vinyl giving this a run from 100 just over the top he's got some pop on that putt mason ford for birdie from c2 and that comes up just a bit short and left. Matt Keats designed this course in 2010 with the help of a lot of people from Charlotte. As Anthony comes up short, Matt Keats, this was his favorite hole in the course. Got to think about him while these players played this hole. And wow, what a birdie for Garrett. It probably feels like a consolation at this point, as I'm sure the rest of the round will feel as he did shoot that five over on the front nine, but this is a great birdie to walk away with, no matter what the situation. Sure, but that is one step closer to that nine under I was talking about. Yeah, which he ha absolutely has to shoot. Yes. I mean, if he wants any chance, I think you're right. It, it has to be just a green back nine, which would get him to four under. Which would be the best back nine ever shot. And there's an opportunity to get an eagle on the course. Hole 17 is a par five, and there is eagle potential on it. The only way to shoot nine under on the back nine is to start by birdieing hole 10. Yeah, and then if you want to keep that going, you're going to want to birdie 11. This is going to be the shortest hole we probably play on tour. Yes. And I'm very happy that they left this in because the initial design omitted this hole. But this one is a challenging little gap and you feel so confident because you're like, the hole's 200 feet, let's go. But right past this basket is nothing but danger. And the gap is about three feet wide. Garrett, very smooth. Does this have enough? I think it might have too much. And there it goes. Very common. This looks like the right stuff. The right side has more space for the disc to land. Trying to park the hole like Garrett did with a little bit of hyzer gets you down the hill more often than not. AB chose the right shot by going dead straight. Did you go sidearm or backhand? I went sidearm both times and I did not kick off a tree and park the hole. 
but Mason did. What did you do? I went par in the play-in, and I, I parred it again today. Pretty disappointing, but it's uh, a lot better than bogey. Yes. And Look at these guys that's making it. Really nice. But it's one that you – it's almost like a bonus hole. It's the shortest bonus <laughs> hole of all time. Yeah. Really, though. It is. Oh, okay, there it goes. Sits down. Because you don't – I don't ever expect to get this hole. Even though you should. Mm -hmm. You should never really bogey unless it's a putting error. Because yeah. – Well, get, it baits you into putting yeah. errors. It totally does. I, I've got a fantastic stat to share with you. Five players have taken a higher number on this hole than they did on the prior hole 10. That's just through this round and the play in the day before. That's awesome. Herbs. The Herbs other hole is GG. officially just over double this length, and it's about as tight as this hole is all the way down. It's pretty incredible that it's those short ones are ones that you don't necessarily feel like you need to dial in, but you definitely need to. Hole 12 is, I, mean, I can't imagine it being less than top three easiest. Yeah, it is. It is a very it's gettable a, hole. Yeah, it's a wide fairway on the left-hand side. You're going to see a lot of sidearms going that left-hand side and skipping around. Pretty wide fairway. There is a route to the right. Tight flip up, which AB is going with right here. Needs to keep and standing. It's, it's just l really narrow. There. That's a great shot. Mm -hmm. Goes deep. It's going to have to work on that stepper again. Yeah, the, the trick here is getting the right pace because it is downhill the entire way. Mason is going down the right side. He's going for the flip up play, and he's actually hitting a pretty similar line to AB except he connects on an early beach tree and kicks left. Very surprising that these guys aren't going with the left to right turnover. We'll see that here from Vino. See, I like this because you're guaranteed to get a little farther up the fairway. I hit it. love that shot. It requires a late flip. Sometimes people try to make that turn too early, and it really decreases the width of the gap. But Vino played that one very well. Garrett is also... This might be a little bit too early. It is, but you can see that was working its way down the fairway. But if you try to turn that corner too early, you're going to hit one of those series of beech trees that make this fairway so beautiful. Oh, that looked like it was the one. And, and now, I mean, Garrett's at a position where, I mean, we don't necessarily need to harp on it too much, but he, if he birdies out, the best he can do is two under. Yeah. And so this is just kind of a battle here for Anthony Barella and Mason Ford. And if Vino gets things going, you know, I don't think that his chances are that great either. But, you know, you don't want to count him out too soon. Anthony Barella is definitely in the hunt, though, as he makes another C2 putt. And he moves to three under. And that birdie right there gets Vino to plus one, so... His day is not quite over yet. Crazy feeling when you're out there. I've been in a position where, you know, with a few holes left, there was just no chance. Not mm -hmm. even if I threw a couple in. Or, and it's, it's just a weird feeling that you get. Like, why am I out here? Yeah, the purpose is definitely lost at a certain point. Hey everyone, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Disc Store. Disc Store has the lowest prices on every disc, backed by a 5% price match guarantee. They offer same day, fast shipping, and the world's greatest customer service. With a massive selection, unbeatable prices, and the best staff in the world, let them help you with your next order. Use code JOMAS10 at checkout to save 10% at discstore.com this week only. That promo code works on everything from their wide range of discs and bags all the way to their baskets and their brand new state-of-the-art chain finder. Head over to discstore.com to get your order started. Again, that's 10% off on top of their guaranteed lowest prices with code JOMAS10 at discstore.com. That reminds us, reminds me of one of the sales we've got going on at jomaspro.com. Not to take away from the ad that we just showed, but we got there's a couple of sales going on this year at the end of the season worth checking out on the hole 13 this is a very challenging uphill 410 feet 
This is a par three that is just gonna take everything of a fairway driver to get all the way up the hill. Bonus birdie all the way. I think you gotta go fast. I mean, A, B, fairway. He doesn't have to. He's going PD and he's getting kicked right and that. He's, he's not in the same conversation as a lot of people. Okay, Bino's gonna be going fast. Yeah, D2. Oh, I would like to see that finish. The early trees on this and gap really. Mason going yeah. mid range. Sorry to interrupt you, but Mason just elected for a par. Playing, playing his odds here. I mean, he knows that four under is a great score, and there's some easier holes to birdie mm -hmm. on the rest of the course. This is not one you necessarily need to pick up. That is a very hard thing to do on this course, is to play for a par and actually execute that game plan. That's a, that's honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed to see him go fuse off the tee pad just to keep it down the middle. What were you going to say before? I was just going to say that the, the way that the early trees on this gap is Anthony's, it was a nice little scramble shot. It really frames up this, this tee pad that almost makes you feel like you're in a straight jacket in a way. You don't feel like you can really rip on the shot because it is just so demanding and it's so tight, but it requires you to really step up and throw hard. Yeah. If you want to get a birdie on this one, if you're in position or if you're in one of those positions that you need to get aggressive, you absolutely have to, like you're saying, you have to throw fast speed. Double G for a rare birdie on this one. Chaining out left side. Only one birdie on the day, and that was Greg Barsby, and it took a 50-foot putt to get that. In the background, you see the FPO basket, which is a par four for the very same hole. That is the hole that is traditionally played when you come to Nevin Park. Anthony and Mason one stroke apart, but I believe Anthony comes in with the higher seed. So if they tie, oh, very important. Anthony would actually get the push, which means a higher seed is almost like an extra stroke you get out there. It really always comes down to one or two strokes, and a lot of times it does for the last couple spots. It comes down to those ties, so we got to keep an eye on that. Hole 14, par three, 366. Up and over a hill, back down. I really love this hole just because of that aspect. This is a brand new hole that, that the CDGC, the Charlotte Disc Golf Club, put in, and it feels like it's been a part of the course forever. I mean, it fits the style of the course. It's a shape that is pretty tricky as Anthony has not hit a tree, and he's gone way past the basket. But uh, kind of just another nod to Mark Uther and his staff able to accommodate the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship and say, hey, we can make sure that we have a gold standard level course here in the, in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. And um, I mean, like, once again, look at this fairway. This looks like a mature area Absolutely. and it's just brand new. Vino with early kick right. He's going to be in a bit of trouble. Mason, this is heading right as well and kicks down to the middle. That should be an easy up and down for his Parsylvania. Little wide here. He's going to have to get lucky through those trees. Does not. Horrible kick. One thing you got to watch out for on this course, too, is if you see a shot go high off the tee, it's not what they wanted. You want to keep everything about Driven. four to five feet above the ground, mm -hmm. eight feet at max. Mason goes forehand on the approach. That'll be a tap and par. Garrett going to give it a nice little shot with the Sonic. Gosh, that looked good, too. He's scared it on the last two out of the last three holes. And look what Anthony has to do here to get into position, to give him a look. Gives that a bit of a stab. And if there's one player who makes those really awkward Spider-Man stance putts, it's Anthony Barella and maybe maybe one Paul Macbeth. Yeah. He does think, a couple uh, of those from time to time. Let me think. 
Gannon makes a bunch of putts just from the knee. Yes, but that's very true. AB puts so much spin on it that he's able to have these low ceiling line drives that, you know, almost nobody in the tournament would be able to do a little nose up as well. So one of the things that these guys are thinking about, because of course they're looking at the scores of the cards that have come, that are playing or finishing up right about now that there's, they are, this is the third card out of four cards. There's actually one card behind them, behind them that has Brad Williams, Drew Gibson, Alden Harris, and Adam Hammes. Adam Hammes. And so any ties from this card with the last card out, the nod would go to that last card. So their score, yes, of course they have to tie or beat the scores that are already in, but they also have to set a mark that they can give themselves assurances that they don't get knocked out for any sort of tie break. So this is kind of a weird position to be in. You're still trying to shoot as low as you can, of course. Now, 15 is just a hum dinger. 630 feet uphill. This is perfect. Oh, wow. But this is a okay. this is played as a par five on the traditional course, yes. I believe. So yes, this it is. is this is a tough birdie to get. That's the longest backhand drive that you can really throw on this hole because the shape of it is much better suited for a forehand anhyzer that kind of starts off to the right, fights back to the left, and just kind of finds the ground. Anthony throws a huge shot. Mason's a little bit off the fairway on the right side, but he should be in a position where par should be doable. Yeah. What he's got to do is he's got he's to get the par here, and then he's got to birdie 16 and 17. That's the dream. Those are the two holes that are very birdieable left. Yep. Hole 18 is an absolute bruiser. Almost impossible. Yeah, and it's a situation where if you, I think the only drama on 18 really comes if you are, you just absolutely know for one way or another, you know that you need to birdie it. Yeah. Because other than that, there's no way that you're going to play that hole for birdie because it's so hard. As we see, Vino's incredible second shot. He's got a nice look from just outside C1 for the birdie. Mason, this actually is going to the left side of the fairway, but that kick puts him back in the middle. That's a good break. Not a bad shot, but definitely living on the right side of the fairway with that right kick. Mm. Going with the roller, squares up the tree. It's hard to really appreciate the undulations and the elevation of this hole unless you are here in person. But this is a very steep uphill shot. Uh, maybe not very steep, but it's gradual the entire yeah. way. It's a nice shot there for Anthony. He's going to have an opportunity to get to four under. And he had Firebird into the green. Journey. That was a Firebird. That was Firebird into the green. Again, we're talking about a, it. It's like his Firebird is almost everyone else's destroyer. Kind of not. I mean, he was close. Good forward Mac for Garrett. And then it kind of gets a little roll back to where it was originally headed, headed anyways. Big putt here to say Park. Give it wow, to Wow, what a that scramble. Was so important. Yes, it was. Big he's, sigh of yeah, relief. Look at tell. that. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's trying not to seem too excited, but that... He knows how important that putt was. A great pop out of the hand, great height, and right on the pole. This would be a great birdie for Vino. He collects. He's had some really nice birdies today, and they've unfortunately been followed up by a string of bogeys. But... No one in the world is doubting Bino's abilities. He is a top-level player. <laughs> Garrett. Easy work. <laughs> Dunks that in. If there's any person who does that, it's going to be Garrett. Yeah, he, that's a regular make for him. He makes the basket really big with his up-and-down hyzer putt. Great birdie for wow. him. Wow. 
Made that look so simple. Again, this is a par five. Nothing at all changes as, except the basket has a wrap that says Barbasol on it. Par five every day. Today it is a par four and Anthony has a tap in three. Hole 16, par four, and like you said a moment ago, this is the easiest of the three holes remaining, but it's not necessarily a gimme by any means. It's a backhand hyzer that flips up a little bit or a turnover forehand that stays drifting left until the very end of its flight to get into position. And from there, you can find yourself anywhere from 280 to 220 in if you're into the right spot. The skips left, it's gonna make the approach a little bit tougher. He could be okay, but that's a little bit tight on the left side of the fairway. Yeah, he'll have something in, but it's more of an in that scramble area, most likely. Vino really challenging the right side of the fairway, gets a good kick into the middle. That I would imagine is in the 300 plus range to the pin. But he really opens up that fairway being right it does. side. Mm -hmm. He's got a straight look, but it is longer than he'd like. You like donuts? I do. I think donuts are fine, yeah. What about Krispy Kreme? Yeah, that, they make a nice classic glazed donut. Well, Mason throws Krispy Kreme shots That's down the, the That was the setup end of the, the punchline, huh? All right. <laughs> yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> Garrett. <laughs> That was heading him to, to the bad spot with a little bit of pace and gets a nice roll back to the fairway. <laughs> Vino gets a nice yeah, light up there. Yeah, all the way good. to the circle's yeah. edge. Might get him back to even par. And Mason, what a smooth, perfect approach. You like biscuits? Yeah, I like biscuits. Sure, why? You like butter on your biscuits? Yeah, I think so. Because Mason is buttery smooth. Oh, boy. <laughs> Anthony, this is drifting right. And that that's... is a big mistake, Jerm. You were mm -hmm. I, I finished your sentence. I'm sorry. No, you're <laughs> was, fine. I was very You were confused. antsy. Yeah. I did not think You like that interrupting you could do people? That. I'm, I'm all You like interrupting it. people with uh, butter on it? Yeah. Well, that's what you just did, buddy. <laughs> I think yours are better. Anthony, another crouch position. Birdie Anthony look. with another <laughs> crouch position. <laughs> nice. Well played. But that's what happens when you get off to the left side. Yes. It really tightens that approach angle, and Anthony unable to pick up the birdie. And it, like you said, he does have the tiebreaker over Mason, but Mason is up there looking for yep. a very short birdie putt to get to five under. Yeah, I mean, that was, I feel like, almost a must get because it's the one of the easier birdies on the course just because the fairway is so much bigger than the rest. And, I mean... It, it feels like the easiest hole because you've been in this tight wooded scenario for so long, you step up to that tee, and that fairways 40 feet wide well let's give let's give the viewers at home a little update here because second card is in first card is in from the first card four under was my number yes. and that was the hot score for a while but when these guys came in at four and five under through this point that number no longer is any good because we got guys on the lead card that are just killing it Yeah, on the lead card, we've got Bradley Williams, who had a hot front nine, continuing his ways. And Drew Gibson is playing really well. So there are some good numbers out there right now. We and also have Hamas is in the hunt. If he can hunt. go birdie out, a few people still in the mix for sure. But our focus right now, Oof. we have a four under in, Mason and Anthony battling it out. Yep. We also have Nicholas Antala. Who's yep. playing good golf out there? Yep. So there's a bunch of names right around that four to five under with some holes to play. Mason with a good shot. If you get over that hill, you're happy about the result. This is a 
quasi eagleable par five. Anthony needs to get the three, and this drifting kick off to the right side is not what he was looking for. It's going to be a very difficult prospect to get the birdie now, if, and that's if he can even save the par. Yep. Right side is not good. Really important that you get through this gap, though. If you kick left, there is out of bounds the entire way down the initial drive. But Vino has found himself in a very sweet spot at the bottom of the hill. You know Garrett's thinking eagle. Oh, yeah. All he thinks. And if this gets a little hyzer, this is going to be in perfect position. No. Good kick to the edge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that just breaks off a moment sooner. So at this point, Anthony knows he has to birdie either 17 or 18 to get in. Yeah, I think that it, it, it might not be necessarily like 100% that he has to, but in his head, he's got to be thinking that for sure. Well, Nicholas is now in with a five under. Correct. So, Or was it five or six? I think. It was five under. Five under. Okay, yep. so Nicholas Antela is in at five under, correct. But we also have Drew and Bradley who are playing so well that it's hard to imagine them coming back to the field at this point. They, oh, wow. They are both at, I well, believe, you just, seven under. The one thing you can't skip over, though, is that even though Mason's in position for the birdie, if he ties Mason... I mean, look at this. Look at this. That's a putt for the birdie. Oh, I get the birdie. right. Mason and him, and he has the... He has the tiebreak advantage. Gosh, yeah. I'll shut up. <laughs> it's a lot to follow, and yeah. it's certainly... It's something that you'd like to be able to follow at the moment, to really feel so the that true... So this upshot right here is very important. extremely important. This would almost make it... So that, yeah, okay, so that's a tap in. Mason's about to move to six under, and that number is going to be safe if he can take a par right. on 18. Now, what it comes down to is can Anthony hit this putt coming up or get the very, very improbable birdie on hole 18, which would then knock Nicholas Antela out? Right. I mean, it's either that or he's just hoping and praying that somehow Bradley and Drew just forget how to throw a disc because they're playing very well right now. Big putt. And he's got to be thinking to himself, making that putt is a lot easier than getting the birdie on 18. So that's got to be a frustrating thing to see happen. I would think that, but with... Oh, <laughs> oh huge putt. Great putt. But with Anthony's distance, he's like one of the people who I feel like can make mm -hmm. make it look kind of easy to get hole 18, you know? Right on the pole there for Vino. You know, and, and there's nothing better than at this point, you know, obviously he's reserved to knowing that this is the end of his, his tournament season. Very huge putt here for Anthony. And he oh, boy. does collect the par. <laughs> oh, boy. But if you're finishing your season, you know this is your last round, your last few holes. What's nicer than dropping a long putt? You know, like leaving with a little bit of a highlight. It's a good feeling. And Mason's got to be just filled with all sorts of good feelings. The way he is playing is smooth, controlled, and like I said on the front nine, it just feels uber repeatable. It does, he's never, he hasn't done one thing all round where it's been like, oh, wow. 60 foot putt yeah it's just smooth controlled dialed and if he shoots six under tomorrow i think six under moves you on i think throughout the week i don't think oh. six under is a score that you're not going to be completely satisfied with as we take a look at hole 18 paul what are these guys trying to do here to get the birdie well they end it with a long par four 875 feet 
mandatory on your left. You go up the hill. There's a bush line that you can easily go too far into. It's a really tight landing zone. And then from there, you're looking at, I would guess, right around 450 low ceiling downhill without mm -hmm. a balance all the way on the right side. And deep is OB as well. So, it, so many things yeah. to contend with. First things first, this tree that you see right up ahead of you. That's the Mando. Keep it tight to that and high and power it. If you want to cut off the distance, that is what you need to do. Anthony Brill is going to need to come up with a big shot. This is very high. Does it get inside the bush line? It does. Okay, so first things first, throw a safe drive. That's going to set up 480 to the pin yeah. at the closest, though. I think he wanted to keep that closer to the tree. Like this one for, here for Garrett. Garrett's going to be 40 feet closer to the basket. Yeah. That's a huge drive. Thing is, that's still... like Just being 480 to the pin isn't hard for Anthony to do. It's a low ceiling that goes downhill with out of bounds behind the basket. So he can easily overdrive the shot and go long OB. Didn't quite look like he got the footing he wanted on that one. And that is drifting towards the spectators and out of bounds. But this is a shot and AB is going with a forehand Turns it over. Does it have an... Oh, my gosh. That had every bit of the distance he oh, needed. Oh, absolutely. That was crazy to watch because it started drifting right. By that time, it was already 420 feet down the fairway or down the... Um, wow. Out of bounds line into the woods. And look at this shot for Garrett at the edge of the circle. I cannot express to you how impressive it is to be edge of circle in two. With a T-bird. That was a T. Okay, that that's a tea even break. just boggles my mind. Here's Mason with a very important upshot. Shows lots of touch yep. right there. Knocks that in, and he knows that that six under will secure him a spot. And uh, not that, uh, I mean, if AB had kept that close, that would have been very, very important for, yes. for Mason because if he comes up short with that approach, takes a five and AB birdies, then he's out. Now he's trying to make it. Yeah, good effort. And that will be a tap and bogey. So that's going to drop Anthony to the three under. But this is a season ending birdie look for Garrett, and he drills it. What a birdie. I can't imagine there being any other birdies on this uh, hole. 4.63 average, Paul. Wow. Bruiser. Yeah. I mean, 56%. That's half the, half the players in the course just bogeyed it. And then there was a double bogey or a triple bogey, actually, because it's a par four. One birdie on the day. And that was Garrett. Mason Ford finishes his great round. Just one bogey on the day. Seven birdies, smooth as can be. And that 600 is going to get him to the quarterfinals. Anthony Brella, however, he's going to finish in sixth place out of the 16 players playing. He's on the outside looking in. And there are the final standings. Niklas Antela, Mason Ford, Drew Gibson, and Bradley Williams will all be advancing to the quarterfinals. Yours truly, season ends just two shots short of making it because I would have lost that tiebreaker to Niklas Antela. But congratulations to our four qualifiers for the qu quarterfinals tomorrow, as they'll be playing the next group of players who finish from ninth place to 16th place. Super important for us to see this, this round and see how good they were playing, what the course is scoring like, because this is going to be the conditions that they play in all weekend. I'm excited to see it. I think... Double digits after watching you think? what they did this weekend is possible, oh, and you have I, you oof. haven't even had the 
best players who finish in the top of the seedings, mm -hmm. the most points, the people who play the most consistent, they haven't played yet. So I, I would love to see that double digit mark be broken. But like you said, I think if you shoot that six under, seven under, that's what we showed today, that gets you in. And I, I can't imagine that not being good moving forward. My prediction is the hot round will come either next round or the semifinals. And that last round, these players playing for $35,000. It's going to be all about match play, playing against the players on the course. It's going to be an exciting weekend. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.